Hello, I'm George Hayes, and this is going to be a tutorial on how to set up code blocks with SDL 2.0 and get your first uh, SDL program running. Alright, so start off with you go to codeblocks.org and go to the download section and download the binary and go in here as far as download the uh, code blocks with the mean GW. Alright, right here and use it and go through the standard setup if you're running Windows. Um, this, section, this section here is not going to actually cover Linux at this time so for now this is for Windows. Alright then go over to run through the general install on it just you know the standard install and install it and then go to libsdl.org and we're gonna go up to SDL version 2.0 here and go down to where it says the main GW tar GZ and download it. All right, and preferably you'll uh, create a directory under C called SDL and unzip it in that directory. And then you're also going to go and grab the mixer and image section of this, and you're going to do libsdl.org forward slash projects forward slash again, and you should get this screen. Then if you click into it you'll sit there and find this file right here and it says the main GW target GZ again 3264 bit grab it and download it to the same directory as the other one and unzip it and do the same thing for the mixer as far as the target GZ and what you should get is something looks like this so under my C directory SDL right and it creates this when you unzip them you'll end up with these three folders go into these folders for the mixer and image and grab the two files here then go back to this and merge them in this directory alright so you can just paste them into that directory and it should merge them and do the same thing for both of them and it'll make it easier for setting up the compiler you won't have to target three different sets of directories you can target one set of directories instead alright so we're gonna jump out of here and go ahead and open up as far as our projects I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create a temporary project in just a second here or close more I've already created one that's uh, I was going to use as far as a demo on it but I'm going to step back out of it for a second and actually show you as far as what I'm talking about doing a basic setup okay and alright so we're going to go file new project you can just click on the create new project here an empty project as far as going into it and in this case I'll go ahead and call this one 2002 as far as tutorial 2 but um, anyway so just click through that finish and when you get into it then you're gonna go as far as into the section that says settings up here and click on compiler alright I'm gonna set our search directories C colon SDL 2.02 .02, I686 W64 for a 32 bit section the reason we're using the 32 bit one alright is because Ming GW comes default with the 32 bit compiler setup to start with and I'm going to step back and look into directories and see why I'm doing this as far as I'm here and telling you that you want to use that one if you look here here's your directory that we're talking about as far as for 32 bit you also have the 64 bit compiler set down here alright so if you go under here and this is your actual include directory here so you bring that up and then you can sit there and click here and copy it alright so you want to grab it use the top director directory to the top one as far as on that okay and as I said C colon SDL 2.00 I686 W64 Ming GW32 included. All right. So after you get that set up, then we're going to go into the linker section. You can ignore this open GL section I got right down here. This line here is what you're going to need as far as set it up. If you're interested in using open GL, I have another video that's up on here also as far as for setting up open GL. But for now, just to set up the SDL, go in here and go uh, minus L mean GW32 space minus L SDL2 main 
minus L SDL minus L SDL underscore image and do the same thing with minus L SDL two underscore mixer. All right, and then save those and save all your settings and so forth. But we're going to go ahead and jump back to the other uh, project that I already created just to save some time so I don't have to type it all in while you're sitting there watching. And this will save us a little bit. Bring up my recent projects and right here. And as you can see, I've already got quite a bit of this set into here. So I've created a primary project for introducing the SDL as far as my include files. All right, I have a file as far as on it, uh, include files. Uh, if you're not sure how to sit there and create a new file, go file, new, and come down to files. And if you want to create a header file here or C++ file here, all right, I don't need to do that right now. But um, so let's put this in as far as for my includes is regarding the SDL. All right, now go on to create a game file. I created my game set file as far as primary for where it has a class in it to handle all this stuff. Uh, a lot of people don't use, like using the class for the primary thing. It's up to you if you choose to or not. But what you need to know as far as um, the SDL part is to create your window. You're going to do SDL window, window, you know, or whatever name you want. But SEL render as far as for the render surface that render area as far as inside your window. Uh, I believe SDL 1.2 used to use surface instead of a render. All right, and then we have SDL event for event handling such as your mouse keypad and stuff forth like that. All right, and then I go on to create as far as my functions for handling different you know sections as far as the game as far as the game start area on execute and initialization loading content event handling then loop on render and cleanup all right then it starts as far as die we creates the game and its sister run on the sister has the windows creates a null immediately for you know that game class you know for initializing any initializing the class when it's first created sets running to true all right when it initializes it does an ex on execute all right on it which handles the on int as far as sending initialize here the window is created um, using SDL create window uh, render clear as far as on that so title uh, call it change it to whatever I guess uh, 100 100 for your upper left corner where you want it to you know appear at 640 by 480 the width and the height and then it's shown as a visible window and there's other stuff you can put in there for like full screen and stuff like that um, anyway so if it's null of course it fails out and you know, air trapping drops it out as far as I then we create the render the render is created as far as with the SGL create render you use your target window as far as here then as far as in this section you know minus one SDL render accelerated and SDL pre present and our vertical sync alright then see out as far as SDL error and uh, and the line if it fails so you know what the error is and it returns you know otherwise it returns true and it goes back and it's initialized. So if we jump back into game.cpp, we see after it on executes, it goes down as far as when it's running. It'll start the next part, which is the actual game loop. All right, while running, while SDL pull event, event on event. Uh, so it sits there and passes an event handler into the event to see if anything happens, um, whether it's your keypad and so forth like that. In this case, the only event handle we got on there currently is on quit, which is when you click the X, a little red box as far as the top of your window. Now, jump back into here. On each time through the loop, you want to sit there and handle all your stuff like uh, updating your AI, you know, whether you're having it you know car move and stuff like that that's all going to happen you're on loop since we don't have anything going on there right now it's empty all right and on render you'll be rendering whatever 
you're deciding to put up whether it's a race car track characters you know buildings you know the, but currently we don't have anything in there we're just creating a screen all right so when that comes to the point and it's no longer running it jumps out and it says running becomes false and it ends this loop and it drops down we go to cleanup cleanup we're just going to destroy the render then the window and SDL quit which is the reverse of the way we actually built it now to make this work you're going to need to sit there and go back to this directory here 2.0 uh, your 686 and you got some binary files your dynamic link libraries you'll need to copy the ones out of here that you need into your project directory such as you know my project directory for the SDL 0 01 here I've actually put in as far as the including JPEG PNG file uh, SDL the primary one image SDL mixer SDL which is for sound and then Zlib SDL uh, is it the DLL sorry all right now these uh, the Zlib and the PNG and JPEG right Zlib is used a lot of times as far as some of the images that are opened along with the image library so you'll probably want to grab all four of those if you're opening any different images all right uh, you need a SDL 2. Point DLL uh, for every one of them and a mixer only if you're doing sound all right so grab whichever ones you want put them into the that where that you're going to need as far as in the project put it in project directory I put them into project directory rather than try and target the other directory as far as going on it reason being is that way I'm reminded to copy those into with the executable if I'm sending out or if I'm sending a project out or something like that for somebody else to go over and stuff um, that way they have the files that's actually needed with it just my personal preference and you can do it your way now there is we're gonna go ahead and run this one real quick and you'll see here it pops up two screens the first screen over here on the left hand side is basically a console screen and you don't actually have to have that pop up and then you got as far as the render screen since there's nothing being rendered there's nothing in it and it's the 640 by 480 all right and this console screen you don't technically have to have it pop up I use the console screen for primary error handling as far as display and error messages and stuff like that for make my troubleshooting of projects easier you can remove that by going up to your project all right and build options and clicking on let's see did I click the wrong place properties probably uh, yeah sorry projects then properties and build target and all right and if you see here it says console application you can change that to GUI and I'll turn that off and you click OK then we can force it to rebuild and it will not have that console window there as you can see go back to project set that back property build target console click on the pause so you can see it pop up okay that way you can have it run and we force it to rebuild again and clicking the build button won't force it to rebuild because it'll think that it's already built correctly and it'll just come up the same way all right so as you can see we can have our console back that way and that is the simplicity of setting up the SDL 2.0 uh, with code blocks mean GW I hope you like it and thank you for watching have a nice day